Um, so I'm Rochelle O'Brien. I work at Durham University. Um, I'm actually a remote worker, so I live on the opposite side of the country in the northwest. Um, I'm very interested in escape rooms. I have been for quite a long time. So interested that I'm now doing a PhD in it. Um, and that has been a journey so far. Um, and it's been an excellent journey. And I'm hoping that I might figure out the answer by the end of it. Who knows? Might just end up with carrots. So this session is cracking the code of educational escape rooms. So the first question I've got to ask you is what your experience is of using anything like games, creativity and playful activities in your practice. Usually when I come into a session, the majority of people are like never even heard of these things. What are you talking about? Um, I am anticipating that that will be quite different today. Um, but just tell me a little bit. Tell me what kind of things you might have tried out. If you haven't tried them out in your practice in terms of in education, what have you done in your own personal life? Have you been to an escape room before, for example? Um, do you play board games? More is really excited when people play board games. Ah, excellent. We have some great lunches in here as well. So we've got someone here who uses paper based puzzles as well with escape room type scenarios. I like that a lot. Great, OK. So apparently I can't send messages because I'm not a member of the chat, which is not very helpful. I'm hoping that it carries on coming through or that might be a little bit challenging, but no problem. Um, so the kill if you want. Yeah, that would be great if you don't mind. Yeah, so we've got uh, some zine making, board game quizzes and escape rooms, um, escape type scenarios with paper based puzzle, um, creating and facilitating escape rooms for the library. Um, oh, interesting, escape rooms in a postcard and Kahoot and Pangeotis who said that is speaking later, so maybe you can tell us more. Um, trying to trick your kids into learning through games. So spelling and word games, um, Minecraft for education. Yeah, loads of great stuff coming out in the chat and some Lego building as well. That all sounds great. Um, so my next question. Where and when do you have your best ideas? And while you're answering this question, I'm going to see if I can figure out why I can't see the chat, because that is not ideal. If anybody would like to unmute and speak about their, where and when they have their best ideas, please feel free. Um, for me, it's probably when I'm walking my dogs or at three o'clock in the morning when I definitely should be asleep and wake up and think, oh my gosh, I have forgotten this thing. Oh, and here's an idea. It's so good to hear you say that because I'm the same, but I always think my 3 a.m. ideas are good and then sometimes my 8 a.m. brain tells me they're not good. Yes, yeah, same. Um, do you also note them down just so you don't I, forget? I, I had some early this morning. I did not and I need to. Do you, Rochelle? Do you wake up and write them? Yeah, I do sometimes. I have like a, a notes app on my phone that is just filled with like crazy ideas, which sometimes I read back and think that was a fever dream because they're so crazy. I've got a friend actually whose best ideas are in the shower and they've invested in shower markers so they can write them on the glass. Which I just think I is love that. Yeah. Great way of doing it. That is fab. My my best ideas tend to come from conversations. So I'm I'm not someone that goes for a walk with the dog and thinks of something magical um, or in the shower. I have to be with around other people for the sparks to happen. It's kind of hard to have that happen in, in my context because I'm a remote worker. I tend to like miss out on those conversations a little bit. And I realise when I speak to people how important that is. So, yeah, that's a really important thing to remember that the that idea of connection. I don't suppose there's anything that's in the chat that you might help me by reading out. There are 
a couple of themes coming out so we've got when we're doing exercise and a variety of exercises quite a few when i should be asleep or whilst i've been asleep uh, a few for the pub not sure how many of those are tongue-in-cheek and how many are real um, lots of talking to colleagues in the office or at events and um, yeah and do shout out if i've missed key themes here folks just thinking that we maybe should get a column in the padlet for all of the ideas that we get during this day just to share that'd be cool yeah to share with other people good thinking so the next question i realize this is all quite abstract but hopefully it will come to make sense that's what we that's what we hope for what is this I'll move to it. Okay. Anybody else? What is it? Beauty. Sunset. We've got PowerPoint slide to go with the sunset that somebody just said. Yeah. So I think when I saw it, I thought it was a sunrise. So do we have other things that are coming through the chat as well? Um, peace. Is it a Myers-Briggs test? <laughs> no, it's not a Myers-Briggs test. It's definitely not that. <laughs> um, olive tree, sunrise and sunset are all coming out quite clearly. Um, space also came out. I love this. Nature. Nature. So the whole point of all of these questions and of this as well is to just demonstrate to you that everybody has a different perception of what it means to be creative and everybody has a different experience of something that they see or something that they experience. So for me, this might be a sunset, but for you, it might just be a picture on a PowerPoint slide without any description. And everybody's approach to education and everybody's approach to an escape room, for example, is different. And one of the things that I try to make sure of when I'm working with people and when I'm using escape rooms in education is I try to encourage them to figure out their own path, figure out their own way of working with these activities. So that is hopefully something that you will see come through in today's session, because I am going to ask you and challenge you to come up with your own path through the session um, and I am not going to know until you decide what it is that you are going to want. So would you like to get on with it or would you like me to ask you some more questions? If you would like to get on with it, can you do a thumbs up reaction for me? Oh, we have a hands up reaction. OK, thumbs up reaction. So you guys all want to get stuck in. We have a hands up reaction though. So um, if anybody has any questions at this point, you are more than welcome to ask. Given my lack of ability to see the chat, which is quite difficult, um, it might be good if you unmute mute your mic if you're wanting to ask a question or, or just bring it up and hopefully Rosemary might help me by reading it out. Sorry. <laughs> Great, okay. So I am gonna whiz us through then. So what is an escape room? I kind of feel like you already know this because you've attended a lot of stuff today. From my perspective, escape rooms are immersive environments where teams use teamwork and critical thinking skills to solve puzzles and escape themed rooms within a set amount of times. Um, they've gained popularity all over the world and now they're being used for higher education. Um, if you go all the way back to the beginning, they were inspired by video games, which is something I may touch on or may not, depending on what you choose. So now I'm going to just very briefly go over why these things are useful in education from my perspective. So they use things like collaboration and teamwork. Um, it can help with focus and motivation, and it can help with things like problem solving as well and creativity and critical thinking. And these are all things that I'm exploring in my PhD. Now it's the point that you want to get to. 
So you're going to have to choose your adventure. You've got four options. You can either try out an escape room. I can tell you a little bit about where my encounters come from, why I'm interested in it, and give you a little bit of theory behind escape rooms. We can look at designing escape rooms and puzzles, or I can do some story time with you and give you some examples. There are combinations of these that mean that you can't do all of them, but depending on what you choose might mean that you can do more than one. If you decide to choose one over the others and you want further information, I will provide the further information after the session. So you won't necessarily miss out, but you can at least choose what it is you want to do. So with my chat challenges, now I'm going to try and figure out which reaction relates to which one so that you can vote for me and I can figure out which you would like to do. If you want to play, I'd like you to give me a thumbs up, but wait until I've finished telling you this and then you can react so I know which one it is. Um, if you want to go through some theory, I would like you to give me a heart. If you would like to design some, talk about designing escape rooms and puzzles, I would like the laughing face emoji, please. And if you want me to do some story time and give you some examples of where I've used them, I want the shocked emoji. I will be shocked if that is the choice. Oh, we have lots of, oh my gosh, this is going to be like really close. Okay, we have lots of laughing faces. This is interesting. I've never been in this position before. Okay, we can do it. Let's go for some designing escape rooms and puzzles. So, as I say, this is as much of a surprise to me as it is to you, because I have no idea what you're going to choose. Um, so I'm going to talk you through a little bit about puzzles, and then I'm going to challenge you to go and do some yourself and come back and we're going to talk about it. So I am going to need breakout rooms for this one, if that is OK, Rosemary, just to give you a heads up. I'll let you know when um that time comes and i think breakout rooms of about five or six is probably a good number perfect thank you for your help so where do you start i think the thing with escape rooms people are often interested in them but also some people can find that quite overwhelming because there's a lot to know so the first place to start is to plan a narrative and you need to think of it like a story. So you just need to start, have a start, a middle and an end point. And then you think of your objectives and you think about what your learners might like to achieve in the activity. And then you might think about passwords and the answers. And I realise this probably seems like a lot, but to me it's pretty logical. You literally just go through this process and then repeat. And there comes a point where you go, all right, I feel comfortable now. I want to break the process. And when you hit that point, that's the point when you know that you've tried it enough times and you can try it with other people. So the final step of it is to plan activities. And that's the part where you take things like your learning objectives and you lead your learners through to the end. So it might be a good idea to ask yourself how activities could lead to your objective. And that's the part where you get to think creatively. So all escape rooms start with a well-planned narrative. So that's something that I want you to keep in mind while you're doing your activity. So I am now going to ask you to have a go. And this is relating to puzzles. That's the section that you've chosen. So in a small group, what I'd like you to do is come up with a problem that you'd like students to solve. If you don't teach, just imagine you have a group of students or a group of people from wherever you might find them, anybody you fancy locking in a room, that's who your audience is going to be. I want you to try and think of a problem that you want them to solve. Then I want you to thought shower some solutions to your problem and see if you can figure out a solution that could work as a puzzle. I know that there's a lot of people here who have experience of using escape rooms and playing them, and I'm hopeful that you're going to end up with a fairly good balance of people with that experience in rooms so that way you hopefully will be able to figure it out and then how might you guide students to solve the puzzle what clues are you going to use i will put this in the chat before i start you off on it 
if you're struggling a little bit with this, what I'm going to suggest if it is that you. Now, if you bear with me. I'm going to navigate us backwards in a very weird way. There we go. We like some weird navigation, right? So if you're struggling with this at all, I want you to think about this creative thinking process. And if you come out of your break, breakout room and you've not come up with a puzzle, but you've gone through this process, that for me is a win. If you come out and you can't come up with a puzzle, don't worry, failing is the best part of escape rooms. So that also is a win. So the way of this way of creative thinking is you come up with your problem, you just come up with as many ideas as you possibly can to solve it, and then you decide what the best solution is based on all of those ideas. One example I've had of this fairly recently that people came up with, the problem they wanted to solve was eating a cream egg without biting into it. And the solution they came up with was heating up a teaspoon, melting the chocolate at the top, and then eating the cream egg with a teaspoon from the inside out. So it really can be anything. I don't want you to take this too seriously because this is meant to be a fun day. So feel free to be as creative as you want with your development of a puzzle, but just keep in mind that you've got an audience. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you to share, if you're comfortable to do so, what it is that you've come up with. So you may have to justify it to the 50 people that are in the room. I can see like a mass exodus happening now because I'm asking you to do a challenge. <laughs> so yeah, that that is that is what you're going to be doing. Does that sound OK? If that sounds OK, a thumbs up would be great. Thank you, Emma. Thanks. So I'm going to ask at this point if you wouldn't mind putting people into breakout rooms. Um, and while you do that, I'm very hopeful that I can get my chat working again. I'm going to give you 15 minutes to do this activity. So I'm going to ask for you to be back by 35 past, if that's OK. Hopefully you can see the right thing. So. Um, this is a list of different puzzle types. So this is something that you may have already figured out, but escape rooms can have all sorts of different types of puzzles. You've already tried some out today. So you've had a go at some number and text puzzles. Um, logic puzzles are another one that are very popular. Hidden objects, so looking through artifacts, that's what Florence was talking about, this idea of object based learning. You're already starting to make those connections with education, so that's fantastic. You'll find that that happens a lot and happens fairly easily the more that you look into this. Things like light and sound, so Nick mentioned this morning about accessible escape rooms. That's a project that I have been working on with colleagues in Durham, and we've been using Arduino boxes, which Daisy, I think you tried out a playful learning last last year um, and they make different noises to indicate patterns instead of having to visually look at something. And likewise, we made some with Braille where you had to feel your way around different patterns to solve puzzles, um, which has been a really interesting thing to explore. So what I'd like to ask you to do in the chat just while I'm finishing off is just Tell me, do you have a, a favourite type of puzzle? Do you have a least favourite type of puzzle? Personally, I am terrible at word puzzles. Really dislike logic puzzles, but I seem to be fairly good at spatial ones. Don't really know what that says about me. I don't know whether it says anything at all about me, but I do find it really interesting that everybody has different preferences and different approaches. And it's always going to be good if you are going to find a team to do an escape room to find variation in this. So puzzle design considerations when you're thinking about them, when you're going through that process in more depth and getting to the point where you have your puzzle that you're going to try out. Think about things like are your puzzles fair? So is there more than one solution? If your intention is for people to find more than one solution, like Florence was talking about there, having the intention being that there are different ways to solve it. That's absolutely fine, but you need to be really clear that that's the objective so that you make sure to include people. You need to try and be clear on the puzzles being obvious that they need to be solved. I've gone to an escape room before 
and not been able to figure out what on earth was going on because I had no idea. So the first thing they said to us when we got into the room was the answer to your first problem was on the wallpaper on the way in. And it was like, great, I'm in the room. I didn't look at the wallpaper. And I felt like I'd failed before I'd even started because I had no idea what I was supposed to have looked at. Nobody else in the room had. So that's kind of unfair. And that was a really not great way to start. So avoid things like that. Um, is there a point where things are no longer able to be solved? And is it obvious when the correct solution has been found? So can you get that feedback? Do you know that it's not worked? Have you got a padlock that doesn't unlock? Think about that as your example. If you're going to do an online puzzle, make it give you a notification that you've entered the wrong password, for example, so that you know actually you're looking for something else. And maybe that's the point to start thinking about clues and thinking about how you un unravel or reveal that information one clue at a time. Strategic red herrings can be useful or really frustrating. This is something that it's hard to find the balance on, I think. Um, you've got to be really careful with it. And you also want it to be not too hard and not too easy. You want to find that just right point where people are happy to keep pushing forward, but not so frustrated they want to stop. And that, again, is something that can come with experience. Speak to other people that do activities like this and get them to share their experiences with you. Absolutely, like Emma just says, the Goldilocks moments, those golden threads. You can find that that is the thing that unlocks learning, though. So it's definitely worth pushing through and figuring it out if you can.